Wait. It is a four letter word and sometimes it feels that way. When I am told to wait, it is sometimes the most difficult thing I can do. And if you're like me, there are seasons in my life where I want God to move and direct my life, but until that happens, I have to wait. What we do when we wait is very important. Dr. Luke tells us in the book of Acts chapter 1 what took place just prior to the arrival of the Holy Spirit. Jesus taught the disciples for 40 days, and before he ascended to heaven, he instructed them to wait. There it is, that word. They were told to wait for the promise of the Father, which was the Holy Spirit. He would come and give them dynamic power to be witnesses and tell others about Jesus. The key verse in the book of Acts is Acts chapter 1, verse 8, which records the words of this promise from Jesus. He said, but you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. But they had to wait. So what were they going to do until the Spirit would come on them with great power? Well, the apostles and early believers, numbering about 120, went back to the upper room in Jerusalem where they were staying. Luke tells us in Acts chapter 1, verse 14, that they were all together in one accord, which means agreement with God's purpose and plan. They wanted God's will, and they were looking for what Jesus had promised. When we are waiting for God to act, we need to be in community with one another, sharing our lives, encouraging, and growing together. It also says they devoted themselves to prayer. As they were in community, they prayed. Now, my hunch is, based on the prayer Jesus gave them in Matthew 6, they started their prayer time with remembering and praising God for all he had done. Then they began to pray for his kingdom to come and his will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. Not their will, but his will to grow his kingdom as they were waiting to receive the Holy Spirit. But we also learn from the last part of Acts 1 that Peter directed them toward God's word not just to know it, but to act on it. If you want direction while you wait for God to act or direct you, join with other believers, devote yourself to prayer, and make sure you are daily feeding on God's word and walking in obedience. It is what I call living faithfully 24-7 as you wait for God to show up. If you're like me, though, waiting also involves an attitude adjustment. If I am really praying for God's kingdom to come, not building my own, then I must remember that Jesus desires to build his church, not showing off superstar Christians. It is tempting to look at the book of Acts and conclude you are living a boring life as a follower of Jesus. After all, we are going to read of powerful personalities and miracles performed by the apostles. We are going to encounter all kinds of mighty works which God did and still does today. But we have to remember that Luke only gives us highlights, not a day-to-day chronology. We also have to stop and remove our colored glasses for a moment and observe that these early believers were not perfect. They were just like you and me. They struggled with doing God's will. They resisted being his witnesses until persecution came along because they liked being comfortable. They also played favorites in the church and struggled with accepting and serving those who were not the same as they were. And the last time I checked, that was racism. But in spite of their weaknesses and imperfections, despite the fact that they were not high capacity people, but ordinary people like you and me with a common or less than common education, God still used them and grew his church. He accomplished his sovereign plan in spite of who they were or their failures. And then God gets the glory for the great things he has done. I don't know about you, but that gives me incredible hope. Hope that as an imperfect person who often fails and even resists God at times, God will still accomplish his purposes in and through me. He will use me as I am. All I have to do is step out in faith and trust him as I wait and he leads me. Your hope begins by trusting Jesus as Savior and Lord. God tells us we are sinners, not perfect, and could never be perfect. We all sin and miss the mark of his holy, perfect standard. Because we're sinners, we're guilty and deserve to be punished by being separated from God forever. 
But that is where the good news begins. He wants to forgive you, transform you, and provide everlasting life with him. The good news is the message about Jesus. He really lived, died on a cross, and rose again. He did so as payment for our sin. He took the punishment we deserve so that God would accept his sacrifice on our behalf and we could be forgiven. How does that happen? How do I gain everlasting life with him forever? By trusting him as Lord and Savior. In so many words, you say, God, I believe I am a sinner and deserve to be punished. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross as payment for my sin and arose from the grave. I'm now turning to you from my sin and self and putting my trust in you alone as my Lord and Savior. Please forgive me and give me everlasting life. If you prayed that prayer, please let us know. Contact us on our website at rockpoint.church and we will put you in contact with someone that will help you grow in your faith. And now let me encourage you to go back and listen to this entire message from Acts chapter 1, verses 12 through 26, and you can find it on our website. And then join us this week as we begin to look at how our lives have changed because of the gift of the Holy Spirit. 